Professor Turley, let me, let me uh, come back to you. And I, I, uh, I thought I'd pulled up your testimony here, but it, it goes to the, the question I raised when I was um, making my opening statement, which was that you'd raise the issue. Oh, I'm sorry, it's page 18 of your testimony. Um, Disinformation does cause divisions, but the solution is not to embrace government-sponsored, uh, government corporate censorship, I'm sorry. Um, so what would be the types of solutions we're looking at? And I, I'll just off uh, Dr. Miller Idris's statement. For example, um, a new phenomenon apparently is people, uh, I guess when I was a kid, you know, they would pull the fire alarm. Now they're making calls uh, and saying that there's an active shooter at elementary school X. And um, because of the networking that everything has now, that, it, that gets picked up by the police and EMT and frightened parents, news media, even though it's false. So uh, one example, I mean, there's, there's multiple others. We could talk about the recruitment videos and the like, and you, you might have gradations of those, but I mean, what would be your take on how we should be addressing these kinds of uh, issues? Thank you very much for that question. I actually think there is a lot of common ground there in terms of um, what we can do positively to deal with, with disinformation. Different disinformation is a real thing. It is a thing that people go on the internet. Uh, it, it seems to be a license for people, and in an age of rage, that license can be truly horrific when you look at how people transform themselves on the internet. What I would stress is that the government should not be in the business of censorship. That that's a bright line that the government can live with. Instead, it should focus on producing better information and to have offices that can counter. Because remember, the courts have accepted that, the Supreme Court has said, the government doesn't have to be neutral on information. When it speaks, it's allowed to take a side. It's allowed to, to say what it, it believes is true. Well, but let's, let's just follow up on that. So. Um I, as government official, learn that there's no active shooter at that elementary school, uh, and I've, you know, call YouTube, Twitter, whoever, and say, hey, look, that's false information. You're scaring parents to death. Can you take that down? Well, first of all, that example you gave may indeed be a crime under, under state law to, to make false uh, claims of that kind with the purpose of triggering panic. Uh, but more importantly, one of the things that can be done is that the social media companies and the government can immediately flag information they believe is untrue and speak in their own voice. What I think we need to develop, and I think there's a lot of room there to develop it, is to try to create better guardrails that keeps the, United States, the U.S. government on this side of censorship, and that includes the use of agencies, uh, the use of private companies, in my view, do trigger the First Amendment, I think that the, the government has actually violated first. Since I, I'm, I'm running out of time, I, there was something else I wanted to raise. I'll have to come back to you all in this, this, the next round. You did mention um, Nina Jankowitz in your, in your statement, um, who I had a, a chance to meet during a deposition in the Judiciary Committee, uh, and I've started following um, her and what happened with respect to her. She was the person, as you may recall, who was appointed to head that board. Um, and uh, as it turned out, she was essentially forced out of the position before it was even formed. Um, and I, I'll offer a couple of articles here that can be put into the record, but there's an individual named uh, Jack Posobiec, I guess his name is, who put out um, arguably false information about her that got picked up by um, Chairman Jordan and others. Um, Actually, I think Ms. Taylor Green had some comments with respect to it. We can put them in the record. I think Mr. Gates did as well. Um, that sort of escalated into her getting death threats. Um, she had to hire a security company. She was eight months pregnant. Parliamentary question, Mr. Chairman. I, I didn't say you that you. He, he mentioned my name and, and accused me of, of saying uh, false information about Nina Jankowitz. Uh, I know you will be. Uh, I, I, I the. The committee will be at ease. Can we pause the clock? Yeah, please do. In fact, put 20 seconds back on the clock, please. Yeah. The committee will suspend.
members are reminded not to engage in personalities, and the gentleman uh, uh, is recognized. Thank you. But uh, members of Congress made comments about her uh, that took on a life of their own. They became viral on the Internet, led to the death threats that she got and still gets, actually, even though she's been out of the position for about a year at least. Um, and I think she's filing a lawsuit against Fox for propagating these uh, stories as well. But, you know, she was clearly a victim of, in my view, misinformation, disinformation. Uh, uh, you know, and, and, and from her perspective, it was very ironic because that's what she was actually brought into the government to try and address. So I'll come back to it later, but uh, thank you, Ms. Uh, Professor Charlie, for your comments. The 